Engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Welcome to a new episode of Chronicles of the Grifters as we cover the Abrams Grifting Campaign as we head into the week. Y'all, seriously, I, I, I want to bring you up to speed on everything with the election. We've got so much other stuff to cover today, including the Matt Whitaker situation continuing to spiral in D.C. Turns out a uh, company he's on the board of has been under FBI investigation, and his role as part of that investigation, we now know. Um the no one bothered to tell the president that this was happening. Uh, not the president's fault. He did not know. Uh, but we'll get, of course, the media wants to make it the president's fault. We'll get into all of that. But let me bring you up to speed on what's happening right now. The Abrams campaign still believes that there are outstanding votes and that they can, they've gone, remember, they went from there was going to be a runoff to they want to recount to back to there's going to be a runoff. Um, I, I, I really do think what happened is on, when was it, Wednesday evening, they had that press conference where they said that if they were to get 23,800 of the outstanding ballots, they would be able to get a recount. And... I blew that story up here and on the resurgent and it got picked up by national media. And sure enough, they had said recount, not runoff. And I think that forced them to have to scramble to go back to no, 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 wait, 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 we're, we're in a runoff. Now, according to the Kim campaign, I, I've not confirmed this with WSB TV, um, but the Kim campaign uh, is saying they tried to, they, now the, the Abrams campaign did say they were going to run runoff ads. They were going to start up the, the runoff ads and uh, that WSB TV turned them down and other news outlets apparently did as well because there is no runoff um, and they're upset about it, but there is no runoff. You, you've got to at least get Kemp below 50% of the vote for there to be a runoff and he's not below 50%. So you can't have a runoff. In fact, you know what else you can't do? You can't spend money designated for a runoff if there is no runoff. And yet that appears to be one of the things they're suggest. Now they're suggesting they're doing it. I don't know that they actually, they'd be crazy if they did because it would be illegal. You can't spend money designated for a runoff when there is no runoff. And if people have maxed out to you, you know, you people can only give you a certain amount of money for a primary, for a general, for a runoff. So let's, let's just say to keep the math easy, let's say it's $5,000. And I think it actually is $5,000. So you can give somebody 5,000 for a runoff, you can get, or 5,000 for a primary, 5,000 for a general, and 5,000 for a runoff. So you can get a total of $15,000. Well, if you spend $11,000 from, you, you get one person gives you that money, that's your budget. If you spend $11,000, well, you've cut into your runoff money. That's illegal. And you can't circle back to that maxed out donor and say, give me more money because they've maxed out to you. You're going to go find other donors. So the Abrams campaign is fundraising. They're going out. They've turned this into a fundraising effort, and they are trying to get people to donate to the campaign. That money would be donated as either a legal fund or general election money. And it would be used to cover the cost of of their field staffers and whatnot. They're, they're not cutting back staff either. They're running a fully loaded campaign, which is crazy, um, but that's what they're doing. And I really do think at this point they're trying to fundraise off this as a sense of grievance. And as I said before the top of the hour, there there's also, I think there's a pride issue in what's happening with the Abrams campaign. It's understandable. I mean, they've poured their heart out into this. They came very close, closer than Jason Carter came or, or um, even Roy Barnes against Nathan Deal, and they fell short. And so there's got to be a pride aspect to it. Okay. Uh, by the way, there, there, Greg Bluestein has just uh, put an update on social media from the AJC. Uh, I told you about 50% of provisional ballots tend to get rejected. Listen to this. Uh, Fulton County, home of one of the biggest troves of prov uh, provisional ballots, uh, county officials say 1,556 of 3,722 ballots were rejected, mostly because they were from people who voted out of the county or were not registered to vote. So 1,556 of 3,722 were rejected because they were from people who either uh, were registered to vote in a different county or they weren't registered to vote at all. I really do think there's a pride issue here. 
The Abrams campaign has been telling Democratic donors since 2014 that she had the methodology by which to win through a voter registration effort. Keep in mind that they fell short in 2014. In fact, people can't even account for a lot of the registrations. Uh, and then they went to court and uh, it was revealed 14, 000, or 11 to 14,000 of the applications were flawed because they put the wrong information for the voters on either a bad address or a bad social security number. 75% of the people on the pending voter file are there because they couldn't confirm their social security number, which they're required to do. Remember, the Abrams campaign, when they were registering people for the 2018 campaign, told people to use their social security number, not their driver's license. Why? Because if you use the last four digits of a social security number, it would be routed through a federal database, not a state database. Database and they wanted it to go to a federal database. Well, uh, 75% of the people who got held up on the pending voter file got held up because their social security number did not match the federal database that Barack Obama put in place. Yeah. So the Abrams campaign actually wound up screwing up royally their voter registrations. As you can see from the numbers that, that Greg Bluestein is putting out, they screwed up royally. Uh, on the provisional balloting. The Abrams campaign was encouraging people to vote by provisional ballot. They wanted paper provisional ballots. Uh, they didn't want people using the computer screens. They wanted provisional ballots cast. They wanted to overwhelm the system. They wanted to drag it out. Remember, it's the Abrams campaign that's been telling people for a week that, oh, we're not going to know on election night. We're not going to know. And the reason they could say that with confidence is they were encouraging all their voters, as many as possible, to vote on provisional ballots. They wanted to overwhelm the system. They, they had a plan in place to cause chaos, and through the chaos, they hoped to be able to get into a runoff, and it failed. So they can't bring themselves to concede because to concede would be to admit failure. So instead, what they have to do right now is they've got to concoct some crazy theory that somehow Brian Kemp, who is no longer Secretary of State, is still Machiavellian behind the strings stealing votes. Or that the vote, remember, one of their excuses is that all the ballots in, in Darty County were mailed to Tallahassee. They filed a lawsuit down there. Turns out there aren't enough ballots down there. Uh, there aren't enough ballots anywhere in the state. They're not making a din in the numbers. And they're not going to be able to get into a runoff. So they're screaming runoff. They're trying to make people think there's a runoff. And what is so frustrating to me is that if this was a Republican doing this, the national media would be beside themselves crying foul saying that the Republican was trying to divide people. But it's a black female Democrat doing this, so the media is giving a complete pass on the story. The media was running story after story about Brian Kemp trying to suppress the vote and steal the vote and, and conflicts of interest. Meanwhile, in Broward County, Florida, you have an elections officer down there who has actually been found by a court of law, a federal court, on more than one occasion to have improperly opened ballots, examined votes, and tossed ballots she didn't like. Yes, the woman who is counting the votes in Broward County has been found by a federal court to have done this, but the local government did not file a criminal complaint against her for doing this. They kept her on the payroll and paid her a bonus. And the media say nothing about this story, and they're trying to perpetuate the grievance here in Georgia. They're trying to make the case that you all are racist for not supporting Stacey Abrams and that the, the white folks in Georgia are stealing the election. Abrams has run a campaign where she said she wanted to unite the state and she wanted to show that her policies would be good for everyone. Black, white, rich, poor, Republican, Democrat. She wanted a chance to show it. And what is her campaign doing at the end now that they don't have enough votes? They're, they're uh, cooking up conspiracy theories. They're blaming Republicans. They're making stuff up. And they're fielding stories to the national media. You will note it's not Georgia reporters running these Abrams complaints unchallenged. It's all national reporters. Because in Georgia, the Georgia reporters are smart enough to know that none of this is real. It's all mythology. But that hadn't stopped the Abrams campaign from trying to divide people. Do you have trouble sleeping? Do you struggle putting your kids to bed each night? When you sleep poorly, how does it impact the rest of your day? Well, there's a great app to help you get to sleep at night. And I can tell you, we've started using it in our family. Jonathan Last, actually, a friend of mine from the Weekly Standard, recommended this. He and his family have used it for a very long time. Uh, the app is called Calm. We have gotten to the point now where... 
Our kids now sleep in separate rooms, and our youngest has wanted to sleep with the dog. Our oldest has wanted some sort of sound machine at night. Well, this app, Calm, it's the number one app for sleep, meditation, and relaxation. It was named App of the Year last year by Apple. And if you head to calm.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of premium programs, including sleep stories, which are bedtime tales for grown-ups designed to quiet your minds and relax your body. They're read by soothing narrators like Clark Peters from The Wire and Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones. There are guided meditations on topics like anxiety, stress, and sleep, and there's soothing music and more. For a limited time, the Eric Erickson Show listeners get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash Eric. That's C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash E-R-I-C-K. It includes unlimited access to all of Calm's amazing content that will have you drifting off to dreamland in no time at all. Get started today at calm.com slash Eric, then get to sleep. I I, I got some personal news need to share. I try to share these things with you. Um, It appears I, I still have clots in my lungs. Um, some of you have noticed I've been huffing and puffing on the air. I've just I attributed it to asthma. Um, nope. Um, so it looks like it's going to be blood thinners for life for me. Yuck. Uh, thankfully Xarelto and not the, not, not the rat poison where I have to go get checked every day. So they are every couple of days. So if, if you see me and I, I, I look bruised now, you know why frustrating, but no, I'm, I'm totally fine. Um, just keep having these asthma attacks and well, turns out mm, probably clot. So anyway, uh, appreciate the prayers and thoughts. I am totally fine. Don't have to be in the hospital or anything like that. When we come back, I got to give you the update on Florida. It is outrageous what is happening in Florida. Welcome back. My friend Virginia Hexton said, you see where Abrams fiction experience comes in? Spreading election fiction. Yes, yes, I was going to steal the line directly, but she deserves the credit for that one. Oh, boy. 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. Those are the numbers. Donnie in Dallas, where it's raining a little bit. Welcome. Hey, how you doing, Eric? Good. How are you? Uh, doing good, doing good. Hey, question: Didn't Stephanie Abrams run for mayor of Atlanta against Keisha Lance Bottoms and lost? No, uh, that was not her. That was uh, Nor- Mary Norwood. But I mean, on the Democratic side, I, I thought that Stephanie Abrams no. lost. On, on her side. Again. No, uh, Stacey Abrams was the minority leader, the Democratic leader of the state house. She left her position to concentrate full time on running for governor. She didn't run for mayor. Okay, okay. I just wanted to ask that. Uh, nope, that's it. Th- thanks very much. Uh, George in Magdana, you're going to be next. Welcome. Thank you for taking my call, Eric. Sure. Um, I'm. I'm as frustrated as, as everyone, you know, on what's going on in these elections in Florida, Georgia. Is there a possibility that they're going to somehow change what's happening um, for the future? Because this is, this is ridiculous. Well, you know, so Jake Tapper from CNN was pointing out that in 1960, uh, they called California for John Kennedy and said he had won the election. And then four days later, after all the absentee ballots were counted, it turns out Richard Nixon had actually won California. It didn't matter, though. Uh, He had still lost the Electoral College and the popular vote. Um, But, yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy that we're still having these problems. And part of it is actually, unlike education, there's actually a money problem here, the lack of equipment. Uh, And then so much of elections everywhere in every state are... Um, they are based on volunteers. Like, for example, election day workers. So many people forget that the people, when you go to the polls on election day, they're volunteers by and large. They may get paid a small stipend, but they're by and large volunteers. And they are there every year doing their best to make sure democracy works, um, showing up and running polls. And it is uh, mostly senior citizens who do it. There are not a lot of young people who volunteer to spend a day uh, manning polls for a board of elections. And at some point, people are going to have to step up and do this. But on the actual voting process, yeah, I mean, look at the problem in Broward County, Florida. 
th- every other county, including counties like Miami-Dade that are more populous than Broward, have finished counting. And Broward County continues to supposedly find ballots and won't say how many there are. A federal judge has just ordered Broward County to comply with the law. They, they didn't even want to comply with the law. Uh, and the, uh, under Florida election law, Within 24 hours of being asked by a candidate how many ballots are outstanding, they have to provide not just the information, but the precincts and how many per precinct. And they've refused Rick Scott's request. The sitting governor, they refused his request. The federal judge has ordered them to do it by 5 o'clock today. Um, there, there are still flaws in the elections. One of the biggest, though, is the lack of voting equipment. And in Georgia, the Democrats have a lot to do with that. The media hasn't told you that story other than the AJC. So you got this, this just crazy situation that's happening in Florida where the Democrats have a woman who is counting ballots, who has been shown twice in the past to throw away ballots of people she doesn't like. She has in the past been shown to open the ballots, see if they were for Republicans and throw those ballots away. And the Democrats are turning a blind eye to it. And you know who else is the media for a month and a half to two months. Now we've heard stories about Brian Kemp suppressing the vote in Georgia. And a lot of Democrats believe it, but there hasn't been any evidence of Brian Kemp suppressing the vote anywhere. There's been no evidence. The stories that Democrats have brought forward have been stories of local Democratic election officials. And one of those stories is now the lack of voting equipment in Fulton, DeKalb, and and Cobb County. The Democratic activists decided that we needed to get rid of voting machines, and they tried to force a federal, get a federal judge to force the end of the electronic voting machines and to use paper ballots, probably so they could stuff them. You know, look, it it is not a coincidence that Democrats in Georgia started losing uh, the Fulton County area in North Fulton County when we got rid of paper ballots and went to electronic ballots and they couldn't mysteriously stuff voting boxes anymore. Yeah, I am going to say that. Uh, I was an elections lawyer in the state. I I can tell you all sorts of horror stories. Um, But the Democrats, they filed a lawsuit and they ordered over a thousand voting machines out of commission and held by a court for inspection. So when you showed up on election day and there weren't enough enough voting machines for you in in North Fulton or Cobb or DeKalb County, it was because Democrats filed a lawsuit and demanded that these machines be taken out of commission. And then you want to know the the funny part? The Democratic county commissioners in Fulton and DeKalb, the Democratic-run boards of elections, they didn't object. They were perfectly okay having the long lines and the, the few number of voting machines. And they were perfectly okay with people having to stay in line so that then they could run to a federal court and say, hey, we don't have enough machines. You've got to order the polls to be open longer. I mean, they worked on this. They planned this out. They executed it. And they came close, but it still didn't get Stacey Abrams or the other Democrats across the finish line. And that's why they can't bring themselves to concede now. It is 55 after the hour. Okay, listen, y'all, um, I've only got slightly over a minute here. we got a lot of people who want to ask questions. So why don't we do like a, an, an open line Friday style show in the next hour, and I'll just start feeling your phone calls when we come back. Um, but before we do, uh, we've reached the deadline. Uh, you gotta, You had to show up by now to claim your provisional ballot at locations where you voted provisionally and they couldn't process it. Fulton County uh, had about 3,700 ballots uh, outstanding that were provisional. They have rejected just over 1,500 of them. There are not enough votes for a recall or a recount now. There are not enough votes for a runoff now. Uh, This has been locked in. Uh, And so there you have it, folks. There you have it. Brian Kemp is the governor. There just aren't votes there for Stacey Abrams. And they're going to carry on. They're going to file lawsuits. They're going to make claims. They're going to say they're in a runoff, but there is no runoff. There is no recount. Brian Kemp 
is going to be the governor of Georgia. And he is now proceeding to form his team. And God bless him. Put him in your prayers. He's the leader. When we come back, let's take phone calls. It is 8 after 6 o'clock, 8 minutes after, I guess if I want to say that less confusing. There is rain in the area. Head up north of Ackworth, you're going to get rain. There is rain on the connector north of I-20 and rain over the west side right now. Uh, Rain on I-85 south and I-85 north. On 75 and I-20, mostly cleared out, but light sprinkles in the area. Welcome. I want to spend this entire hour on your phone calls. The phone number is 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. I do have a bit of breaking news for you, though, that I do need to share. Uh, The number of provisional ballots has decreased from 22,000 to 17,527 provisional ballots remaining of uh, Fulton County's 3,700 provisional ballots. They have rejected 1,500 of them, which is actually fairly normal. Um, and also, uh, Brian Kemp's vote margin has gone up. Stacey Abrams has assured us, her campaign assured us, uh, that the Kemp campaign vote margin would go down as the provisional ballots were counted. Actually, they have gone up. And why is this? Because now that everyone has surveyed the adjusted exit vote data, we have a surprise no one expected. Well, maybe the Kemp campaign did, but no one else expected. Turns out that the majority of new voters in Georgia voted for Brian Kemp not Stacey Abrams. Also, 58 counties have now certified the results already. Uh, What is the certification? That is, they're they're locked and loaded. They have no more votes to, to account. And so they've certified the results onto the Secretary of State's office. How is this going to play out? By Tuesday, uh, the remaining counties, uh, the remaining 101 counties, will have to certify their results. Uh, The State Board of Elections will then certify the state results on Wednesday. Uh, All provisional ballots had to be accounted for by 5.30 p.m. today. So uh, they're done now accepting and reviewing the provisional ballots. The ones that uh, they have approved will be counted. The others rejected. And we're done now, pretty much. There are not enough votes. The Abrams campaign assured us that as the provisional ballots were counted, uh, her the margin would decline for Kemp. In fact, it has gone up 103 votes. Uh, there's just mathematically no way uh, that Stacey Abrams can get into a runoff or a recount situation right now unless there is some body out there right now filling out some ballots and, and stamping them last Tuesday or something. I, I don't know. Weird situation. All right, uh, let's take some calls now. Uh, I'm going to go first to uh, Tom and Habersham. Welcome. Hey, Eric. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, hey, I, I want to commend you on the way that you speak with people. Very easy to understand, and your experience and your legal background would make it easy uh, for you especially to do it. My question is, would you consider a panel or at some point in time – using some airtime to educate younger people on the, not just the electoral process, but perhaps the system of checks and balances in government anyway. Yeah. You know, maybe I ought to do just like, like pick a night and do a one Oh one class on some of this stuff. Um, I mean, it would be absolutely wonderful. I grew up, uh, Terry Rogers is my father's best friend. My dad's a lawyer and judge. I grew up knowing these things, but Bless your heart, even my wife sometimes hears something and turns to me asking questions on things that for me are common knowledge. And it's almost as challenging as you are to other uh, to other aspects in government and politics is issuing a challenge to millennials to educate themselves rather than running their mouths. <laughs> that may be hard to do. Well, Tom, look, first, thanks for the kind words. And yeah, I, I may have to do that. You know, one of the other things I want to do is I actually want to, last year, no one actually gave me a heads up on it. Uh, and this year, I want to do a very good job starting in January of trying to remind people when the Republican Party precinct meetings will be, when the the county meetings will be, the district meetings and the state convention, all that. 
uh, want to do a want to do a much better job of educating people on that so people can get involved in the process. Because I can't tell you the number of, of listeners when I've done it in the past have reached out even now and said, hey, man, I, I got involved in the party and now I'm the county chairman or I, I'm the chairman of an area in my county or I'm doing this in the party and I'm going door to door and I'm doing these things and just trying to get people involved in the process. I just I was looking at my Facebook page. Um, I, I put up the the note about Kemp's margin of victory. Um, and I really, I saw a comment I put up yesterday. I really do think grifters of Glasgow County would be one hell of a bluegrass band name. Don't y'all think so? I mean, it, the grifters of Glasgow County. <laughs> That's what the Abrams campaign has largely become at this point. Uh, they're finding yo- votes up the butts of unicorns at this point in Glasgow County. Uh, at least that's what they're hoping to. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Uh, 404-872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. Rocky in Atlanta, welcome. Hi, thank you, Eric. Uh, I thought I heard earlier today that uh, the Democrats and the Republicans had come to some sort of an agreement in Arizona about those extra ballots they found. Yes. Am I mistaken, or was there something to that? Uh, th- there is an agreement. So one of the big hangups over um, what's going on in Arizona is that only – so they've still got about 300,000 ballots to count, 300,000 ballots. And it, it, the Republicans have fallen behind now with uh, Kristen Sinema, the Democrat, going ahead in Arizona. And the Republicans are actually they, – they think that they may have the votes. There's a highly Republican area of the state waiting to be counted. But the hangup has been that only certain designated officers of boards of elections are allowed to count. And the Democrats and Republicans basically went to court and agreed that uh, other people involved in the elections process would be allowed to help count the votes provided the parties uh, had designated watchers to to look over their shoulders to what they were doing. Really, it's just to speed up the process. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you. And uh, one last thing, prayers for you and your family, man. It's got to be you. tough. I sure appreciate it very much. I, I do. Um, yeah. Clots. What can you do? <laughs> Um, okay, let's go back to the phones. Uh, Mike, calling from McDonough. Welcome. Yeah, Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, I uh, just wanted to say that Abrams' underhanded way of trying to steal the vote by, I'm talking about the machines being put out of commission, and then her lawyer getting on there and acting so angry uh, was really upsetting to watch that. Um, the other thing is, why why did did they not take the names of the people that they turned away at the precincts as so that when they came back they could vote and not just throw it open for 3 hours for everybody to come in and vote well you know so what actually happened over in, in DeKalb in particular um was in one part of the the county uh no that was in Gwinnett County that where the the power cords weren't brought. They had some technical difficulties in DeKalb County. Uh, And then there were a lot of people over there who they showed up and they didn't have their, their voter ID. And I honestly think that there were activists out there who were encouraging this because they wanted provisional ballots cast. They wanted to convolute the process and essentially buy the campaign time to try to find outstanding votes and ballots and, and give uh, time for absentee ballots to come in. Um, and so people were showing up, they didn't have their ID. A lot of people were turned away because they didn't have their ID. They could have voted provisionally. This is, by the way, this is why there were so many provisional ballots is, uh, the Abrams campaign essentially encouraged people to ask for provisional ballots. So a lot of people showed up at the polls who could have actually voted on the machines and asked for provisional ballots instead. But then a lot of people showed up, they didn't have their driver's license with them or any sort of photo ID. And so they had to vote by provisional ballot, and that's why they've had to have until 5.30 today to show back up and show their ID. They, they were allowed to cast a ballot, but they had to show up with their ID. I can tell you what's going to happen on Monday. On Monday, you're going to have people show up and say, wait, I, I got my ID. I cast a provisional ballot. you got to count it. And the counties are going to say, you had until Friday to do it, and you didn't do it, so we're not counting your vote. And this will be yet another grievance we're going to hear about next week before the vote is certified. But again, uh, there we are now down to 17,527 provisional ballots, and Brian Kemp's margin of victory has increased. It has not gone down as the Abrams campaign said it would. Do you have trouble sleeping? 
Do you struggle putting your kids to bed each night? When you sleep poorly, how does it impact the rest of your day? Well, there's a great app to help you get to sleep at night, and I can tell you we've started using it in our family. Jonathan Last, actually, a friend of mine from the Weekly Standard, recommended this. He and his family have used it for a very long time. Uh, the app is called Calm. We have gotten to the point now where our kids now sleep in separate rooms, and our youngest has wanted to sleep with the dog. Our oldest has wanted some sort of sound machine at night. Well, this app, Calm, it's the number one app for sleep, meditation, and relaxation. It was named App of the Year last year by Apple. And if you head to calm.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of premium programs, including sleep stories, which are bedtime tales for grownups designed to quiet your minds and relax your body. They're read by soothing narrators like Clark Peters, from The Wire and Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones. There are guided meditations on topics like anxiety, stress, and sleep, and there's soothing music and more. For a limited time, the Eric Erickson Show listeners get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash Eric. That's C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash E-R-I-C-K. It includes unlimited access to all of Calm's amazing content that will have you drifting off to dreamland in no time at all. Get started today at calm.com slash Eric, then get to sleep. 26 after the hour, the phone number here, 404-872-0750-1800, WSB-TALK. We're basically doing an open line Friday style this hour. I'm just taking your phone call. And bouncing off your questions to to do the second hour of the show. Why? Because it's Friday. Might as well. Let's go back to the phones. Uh, let's see. Um, Eric in Covington, you're next. Welcome. Hey, Eric. How are you? Good. To, doing great. I uh, love your name. That's just mine spelled correctly. Ah, uh, baloney. I nearly <laughs> said something bad on here, and it's your fault. <laughs> well, my question to you is, what are the odds of having the Electoral College at the state level? Uh, none. Um, and the reason is Baker versus Carr, a, a Supreme Court decision that established uh, essentially um, one man, one vote rule. You know, it used to be in a bunch of states, and I believe Georgia used to be one of these states, that the House of Representatives was the House of State Houses of Representatives were all proportional, just like the U.S. House. And the Senates were just like the U.S. Senate. Each county got one man, uh, got one one senator. Uh, but a number of states started adding Senates, uh, started adding counties when large urban areas started growing. And the Supreme Court said you can't, because of Baker versus Carr, one man, one vote, you can't do that. Your Senate has to be proportional like your House. I think it's a garbage decision. I, I frankly think it should be, I think that, that counties should be able to have um, representation in the same way that states have representation in the Senate. Can't. But the other logic there from the Supreme Court is that counties are uh, subsidiary entities of states. States are not subsidiary entities of Washington. They're actually autonomous nations that have limited their autonomy by the Constitution, where counties are formed on the whim of a state, so it's not quite the same. I wish we would go to that, though, uh, particularly as Atlanta grows and tries to dominate um, other areas, at least do that. Maybe not an Electoral College situation. The, the Electoral College at the state level would be unconstitutional because of the one-man, one-vote situation. Um, but I think that uh, we're going to have to find ways to accommodate the rural-urban divide. I mean, look at New York State. Virtually every county went for the Republican in New York State. And Andrew Cuomo still won because he won like five counties. And they just have to be the five most populous areas of the state, including New York City. is 39 after the hour. I am Eric Erickson, and we have opened up the phone lines to your calls, 404-872-0750-1800, WSB-TALK. Just so you know, there is uh, light rain throughout the listening area. Now, mostly on the south side, um, south of I-20 by and large, other than to the east of the city, south of I-85, you got rain, the Walnut Grove, Monroe area, Winder, uh, Snellville, Social Circle, Covington, that area. Um, a lot of it, though, south of Douglasville and then inside the perimeter. Now, back to the phones we go. I want to go to Patricia in Gainesville. You're going to be up next on WSB. Welcome. Hi, Eric. Thanks for taking the call. 
Sure. I appreciate it. Um, I want to make a comment because, you know, all these conversations and the voting and the recounts and everything, I'm an immigrant. I arrived in this country about 25 years ago, and it cost a lot of money and a lot of time for me to go from my student visa to my green card to my citizenship. And it's really revolting when I see people voting and they are not qualified for it. I wanted to vote for a long time since I've been I've been legal in the country the whole time, and I was not eligible to vote. And what I believe a lot of these closed count votes, they are being jeopardized because of that situation. There are a lot of people voting that because they believe they have an F1 visa as a student or a work visa, or they are uh, married or without in the process, or they have the green card already. That they, because they are legal residents, they are eligible to vote. They're not. Right. Oh, listen, and- it, it's not just that. The the number of people who showed up, I mean, look at, at Fulton County had 3,700 provisional ballots. They rejected 1,600 of them because the people never bothered to register to vote. And they just showed up and decided they could vote. Yeah, it's absurd. Oh, it And can- I, call, I talk to people at college. And you look, I'm not talking about people that are not educated or anything. I'm talking about people that go to college, people that have information, including professors, and people that just say, no, because uh, uh, what do you have against an immigrant? I said, nothing. I have an accent, if you don't, if you don't notice that yet. I do have one. But my point is, it's not okay. It's like, this is the point. This is the country. It's a home of somebody. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you just walk in the doors and you do whatever you you want any time you wish, it means that anybody can walk into your house, decide to change your furniture or kick you out for no reason whatsoever. It's the same thing. Yeah. And it shouldn't be it, By the way, Patricia, people tell me I have an accent too. No, I don't, I'm, I don't really, I don't, don't bother me. <laughs> but, well, look, bother th- me. thank you very, your, your point is well said. Thank you very much for the phone call. And, and you're, you're right. The, the number of people who showed up, the, the, who, you know what is actually even more frustrating the American citizens who show up to vote, they don't even know what's going on in the country. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I listen. I have a real problem with people who've decided that the partisan opposition is the enemy. There are real enemies in the world, and they're just opponents. They're that we disagree on the best way forward for the country. Uh, I don't think that really makes them the enemy per se. And I, I don't. I don't have a problem if you want to go vote for someone I don't like. You're perfectly entitled to it. What really, really makes me mad are the people who go vote and they don't even know what the heck is going on. They haven't bothered to educate themselves. Uh, they're just going with the herd. Oh, all my friends are voting for the Democrat. I guess I'm going to vote for the Democrat. Or all my friends are voting for the Republican. I guess I'm going to vote for the Republican. Uh, they don't know who the candidates are. We saw a lot of that in Texas, by the way. Uh, For example, in Houston, the Republicans in in Texas, Republicans years ago, it was actually Democrats who did it and Republicans left it when the state flipped to the GOP. They left uh, straight party voting. So you go in and say, I just want to vote for all the Democrats or I can vote for all the Republicans. You don't even have to educate yourself on who they are. Uh, So in Houston, they have a county executive who is highly popular, bipartisan popularity, and they rejected him. For someone who's ne- who I think is under 30, doesn't even know what the job is as county administrator or county executive, um, put that person in. They've never had a real job straight out of college, admitted they don't even know what the job is, but they were running because they were inspired by Beto O'Rourke to run. And because of the straight party voting, uh, that person is now going to be the county executive, completely out of their league and experience. And that's what one reason I think straight straight party voting with a button to make it happen is, is a terrible idea. Uh, but people didn't bother to educate themselves. That's what puts our democracy at stake, not Donald Trump saying bad things about Jim Acosta. My goodness, I'm seeing General Electric has just fallen 8.7%. It was down almost 10%. Per- wow. Wow. Goodness gracious. Okie dokie. Um, let's go back to the phones to Darren calling from coming. Welcome. Hey, Eric, how are you doing today? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. You know, there's an old saying, if you're not the lead dog, the scenery never changes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Democrats are the first place losers, so get over it. <laughs> <laughs> really, come on, let's get over it. 
it, it, it is it's time, but they're not. They want every vote counted, Darren. And you know what's happened? They're counting every vote, and and Brian Gipps' numbers are going up. Well, and that's great because it it tells you just how much the stuff is really rigged and how far uh, politics has really came uh, through the years. And uh, we all need a change, mm-hmm. and maybe we'll get one. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Darren, thanks very much for the phone call. Uh, Eric from Gainesville, you're up next. Welcome. Hey, Eric. How's it going, man? Great. How about yourself? Well, I'm in 285 traffic. So. Oh, I will pray. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, my observation through, um, I, I guess I'm a young voter. I'm 38. Um, and through my professional career years, I've noticed so many people, uh, especially when Barack Obama ran for president, so many people voted based on skin color and no policy. And it drives me up the wall, and it's really scary because people, you know, it's like rock the vote. That was the thing back in the 90s. And I'm like, I'd I'd rather people stay home and not vote if they're not going to vote on, you know, beliefs of the person they're voting for, just skin color or, you know, like, you know how cool it would have been if we, you know, living in the state we live in to have the first black female governor? That'd be so awesome. I mean, Seriously, legitimately awesome. Yeah, if she has the right values. Yes, and I mean, uh, that, that, you know, doesn't. let me just stop you there because this is such a pet peeve of mine that I, I, Stacey Abrams could get elected in Georgia as a black female if she ran like Nikki Haley. Right, but they're going to Bernie Sanders. You got Democrats out there like him saying that we're all racist because we rejected her as opposed to we rejected her policies. It's terrible, and no, you know the last. Thing that kind of ties into that is I hate this team kind of thing where you're either red or blue and, you know, the poor Libertarian Party, who, who the heck's going to vote for them because they don't have a chance. And so if, if that person was appealing to me, I still couldn't vote for them because I'm, I'm voting for the red guy to keep the blue guy out yes. of office, not because he's blue and yeah. not because he's red, but because I disagree so much with blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and yeah, the poor libertarians in Georgia have forced us into a runoff for secretary of state. And now we all got to turn out for Brad Raffensperger to make sure John Barrow doesn't become secretary of state because of the libertarians. Although, honestly, uh, maybe those libertarians wouldn't have voted in uh, the election. In, they would have stayed home and we wouldn't even be having conversations about potential runoffs. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not opposed to people voting third party. But, man, uh, the libertarians in Georgia, they got ballot access, and they've never been able to figure out what to do with it. It is 56 after the hour. Uh, I, you know, Doug is right. I don't know what it is. Um, and I guess it is the, it's the so many more people driving after dark who don't like to drive after dark. But it, it is just it, people have been crazy on the road this week. It has been just genuinely nuts on the road. I, I don't know. People just it's like they've lost their ability to drive, but it's happening during the daytime, too. I, 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 I have no idea what it is. You'd think with an extra hour of sleep. On Sunday, people would be okay, but no, it's it, driving is sucks out there. It's it's crazy people on the road. Um, you guys have a great evening. I'll see you on Monday.